So what am I most in, most interested for for product announcements? Um, um, picking just one. Um, I like the focus. I mean, I've obviously have a, a strong history with the VDI space. Um, you know, they're constantly talking about Horizon and Octopus and AppBlast the last couple three years, and to see that still still coming forward is is both both exciting and frustrating um, from the fact that it's taken. You know, they they're showing it, and it's something that my customers are constantly asking about when is Octopus going to be available we could really use something like this um, you know we, we want to do virtual desktops we want to use Vue but the application delivery isn't could, could be better it's not that it's bad or that's difficult it's just you know Horizon it's so much more attractive way to do it they want to get it sooner than later and VMware keeps keeps promoting it and it, everybody agrees that that's the right direction and they're on the right course but it's not here yet, and that is a source of frust happy frustration, I guess. It's not all bad, but it's, it's exciting. So that's not necessarily something that was announced or delivered at this point, but to, to see that they're tying Octopus in there real tight, and you know, the AppLast stuff will be in there real tight to, to make a full robust package along with, with a view solution is, is an exciting thing for me to see finally come, come into the light. There, there's, there's a lot of innovations I'm really excited about. Uh, I, I think for me, the, the most important one is pe people that know me will know that I am not the biggest Windows fan in the world. I, I tend to try to avoid those product lines as much as possible. So for me, a web client that I can use without Windows and, and have Firefox and Chrome and all those things that, that I prefer uh, and not have to worry about starting up a VM just to manage my virtual infrastructure. For me, that, that is something that the I think a lot of people have been asking for for probably at least two, three years at this point. Um, there's a there's a, a thread on the communities forum that I think has something like twelve and a half thousand replies of people asking for a uh, specifically for a Mac client, but at least a non Windows client. So I'm really really excited about that. It it, it does make our jobs as vendors harder because we have to completely rewrite all of our plugins from from ground up. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a challenge. Uh, we'll we'll certainly be there eventually. Here at VMware 2012, uh, there's so many new innovations. I mean, VMware launched the vCloud suite, which they're calling you know, their solution for the software-defined data center. As part of that is vSphere 5.1, uh, SRM 5.1, vCloud Director 5.1. Um, and you know, that's just one of the innovations. And then you've got all these third parties, the, the complete you know, ecosystem here, launching all, all their innovations. So, I mean, the innovation that I saw that was most uh, surprising to me, you know, something where a light bulb went off in my head, I'm like, why didn't I think of that? Or, you know, I, I thought VMware would have thought of that, was uh, cloud physics. So cloud physics, they install a virtual appliance inside your virtual infrastructure. I mean, you do it yourself in a few clicks. And then they start gathering information about your uh, particular, you know, virtual infrastructure, what's going on with it, uh, host information, virtual machine information, sizing, and they, gather all of that from customers you know, around the world, thousands of customers, put it in a, a gigantic big data database, and then you access that through a web browser to learn about what other people are doing. So you know, I think it's the power of, of uh, knowledge about other people's infrastructures that you can suddenly leverage to learn you know, how you compare to others. Um, and then there's all these things called cards that you can run and you can see you know, if your infrastructure needs to be compare, um, Im improved, um, and they're calling it resource management as a service. And you can even uh, suggest your own cards uh, if you have ideas of, of what you'd like to see. So right now it's in a free trial, a free public beta, um, and uh, I encourage you to check it out. No, so you know, VMware announced a lot of great things today, um, a lot of you know, cool innovations, vSphere 5.1. Um, you know, the, you know, increasing the platform support is, is going to be key for Veeam, uh, you know, to keep up with the innovation that, that VMware is doing. So, you know, we're getting ready for our 6.5 release, so we'll have full support for, for vSphere 5. Um, and, you know, all the, n not necessarily all the, the great things that they're including, but we'll at least be able to support it. And then looking down forward into the future is, is being able to take advantage of a lot of the innovation that, that VMware is driving and bringing to the market. The innovation that I'm most excited about at this World VM World is probably a technology preview that we're showing off at the, uh, the booth right now. It's called vSAN and it's basically a virtualized storage system and it allows us to use all the local disks in the a, in a system and uh, offer that as a shared data store. 
I think that's a really cool piece of technology because by using that you can avoid using legacy storage systems and you actually have the flexibility to scale out if required but you can also scale up within the box. I think that's something which is truly unique. The other thing that I'm really excited about is VxLAN and all of the new uh, security enhancements which are part of the, uh, the vCloud Suite uh, offering. So for instance, within the vCloud Suite offering, uh, this visual edge is part of that, and I think that's probably one of the coolest uh, new offerings that we have. It allows you to do set up a, uh, a, a, a highly available uh, firewall. On top of that, uh, we offer things like netting, uh, DHCP, which is all part of the uh, of the V-Shield Edge appliance. But there are so many cool things, actually. It's difficult to mention just one or two. There's all sorts of things. It's simple, something simple which more is related to the SMB market, for instance, is the, uh, the non-shared storage-based uh, V-Motion that we can do as of 5.1. I think there's, there's too many things to, uh, to actually talk about. I would, I would say the most innovative product that I've seen out there comes from uh, some guys over at Extra Hop. Uh, so, so extra hop um, goes into your your virtual switch inside VMware and looks at the traffic going across for inefficiencies or problems in the traffic. So it does it at wire speed, uh, and it and it decodes all the information going across to uh, help you spot. Excuse me. <clears throat> it decodes all the information at wire speed to help you spot problems with applications, um, you know, SQL traffic going across, for instance, uh, if you have a SQL query that's incorrect or, or is taking too long, extra hop can spot that kind of thing uh, down at the virtual switch level. It's crazy. So this year, um, vSphere 5.1 is really good. There's a lot of, it's, it's an amazing point release. So, you know, things to me, web interface for management. It's such a simple thing, but I'm a Mac user and I'm tired of booting up a Windows VM to run the VI client. So, uh, you know, I asked the, in my session the other day, you know, how many people would use the web inter the old web interface? Nobody raised their hand. I was like, how many people like it? Not many people raise their hand. But the new one is much better. There's a lot of new features just all the way through the stack. A bunch of stuff in the networking side, which again is what I spoke on this week. Things that I call safety nets to help people kind of convince them to move over to distributed switching if they can. Plus there's a gr lot of great storage features. And then licensing. I mean, I hate to say a great innovation is licensing, but you know my customers are thrilled that the VRAM licensing is gone. I'd love to have my year back of talking to them about it, but you know here we are. And, that, the bundles for with vCloud Director, and again, vCenter Operations, and some of these other tools to kind of help seed those into people's environments. It's just, it's easier to do it when I can offer them a good bundle, because I feel like a lot of people feel like, okay, I bought vSphere licensing. Now I'm gonna buy vCenter Operations. Now I'm gonna buy vCloud. I feel like I'm getting nickeled and dimed. So honestly, that's one of the biggest things we've seen. Others, there's a lot of stuff going on in the storage world. You know, we do a lot with EMC storage, but walking around the show floor, it is amazing what flash technology is doing to the storage space. Looking at some of the briefings, some of the things coming in the future, it's gonna to get to a point where you just drop in a brick of flash storage, carve it up a little bit, and you've got as many IOPS as you're ever gonna need. So it's almost taking the fun out of storage a little bit, but that's, that's an area that's hugely, it's just booming right now as the pricing comes down. And then management and automation. I mean, that's the next thing. That's the, the area that's really evolving rapidly, Cisco's automation suite. VMware purchasing dynamic ops, all the other guys you've got on the show floor showing their you know plugins and automations. Uh, it, it's an interesting time, and I think we're finally starting to see that promise of cloud that everybody's been talking about for years. That you know now we've got those pieces and parts to really start doing those things and automating it properly. So this year, there's a lot of cool stuff coming with the vCloud suite. I'm really really interested to see how more people are going to start adopting vCloud technology because it's starting to be able to just be part of the enterprise licensing. Also, the vShield Edge is now able to go and connect to multiple edge gateways. So now you can actually connect to multiple different networks. So being able to be more rigid and flexible in the networking is going to see a lot more people starting to put more of their workloads into vCloud and maybe starting to look at the migration of vSphere into the vCloud. Uh, it's, it's something that's kind of under the covers, and I, I don't think it's actually it's not there yet. It's not something they've they've released, um, but I'm really looking forward to the um, the Horizon application that that uh, Steve Harrod spoke about today. 
um, and the different policy engines that are in place. So the ability, this, this ideal of being able to have any type of device and being able to have um, connectivity back to my data, to my desktop, uh, to whatever that, that ends up looking like depending on what I'm connecting from. If that's a phone, if that's a tablet, if that's a, a laptop, a desktop, um, over high bandwidth, low bandwidth. Um, the ability to be able to have that, that capability I think is huge. Um, it's something I don't see actually out there, anybody that, that has um, in the industry. So providing that type of an access, I think that's going to be that, that combined with the, uh, the Project Octopus Dropbox for the enterprise. Those, those are going to be key. I, I see, I really see that, that um, virtual desktops themselves aren't, aren't, that's not the end goal and the, the panacea. Really what it is is apps and data. That's what people really care about. They don't necessarily care about their desktop. They care about accessing an application and using an application and accessing data. So as long as we can get them that information in a manner that's intelligent, depending on what the devices they're connecting with and easy to use, uh, that's going to be a key winner for, for the enterprise. I think the innovation I'm most excited about is the idea that the vSphere client is going to go away because that opens up all kinds of interesting scenarios and so no longer are we going to have an installable that you have to run and install on a Windows machine. Right? You have to manage everything through these series of web-based interfaces. So that minorly terrifies me but it excites me at the same time because I, I can see that going forward as the future of you know, elasticity and being able to move things around uh, in the data center and even outside of the data center. We talk about hybrid clouds and moving between public and private clouds and I think when you have a static installation such as some like the vSphere client, it's, that's not mobile. You can't move that around. So the idea that that's being taken away um, excites me in the fact that we're actually making some progress towards the cloud becoming real uh, and extending outside of um, private data centers. At this year's VMworld, I was really happy to see the change in the license model based on user feedback, specifically around uh, the VRAM tax. It was very unpopular, and I really appreciate the, um, the listening effort that was put forth by VMware to the user base, and that really makes it a, a consistent you know, product with a lot of other solutions in the space, and easy to use for the customers, easy to grow, easy to scale the solution, which really matches their technology. Uh, what innovation am I most excited about at VMworld this year? Um, that would probably be the release of vSphere Replication with vSphere 5.1. So I, that was my favorite part of the SRM5 course was talking about that new feature. Um, well, they released it free of, well, free of charge if you had a certain version of vSphere 5.1, which will be released uh, soon. Um, so in, instead of having to buy SRM if you don't need it to replicate virtual machines, you now have it um, free of charge if you upgrade. Um, I love it because it's um, a, a good way to, to create some sort of minimal disaster recovery um, for certain use cases. Um, my, the, only, the only drawback I see to it is that it can't be accessed through an API, so you can't script against it today because they don't want people to write their own SRM product. So they're trying to protect their SRM product. So I can maybe see that if you're VMware trying to pay the bills, but it's still, um, I think it's a neat technology and it, it, it'll be, it's gonna be unique to see where VMware um, takes their disaster recovery um, providings in the future. And I think opening that up free of charge is gonna uh, create some unique use cases um, to, to take advantage of it. So I think one of the things that I'm really excited about that we're doing in Global Support Services is we have customer support days. And it's a lot like what Train Signal does with you guys do a lot of that education and you do online education and all that stuff. We try to bring education to the customers as well. So a neat way that we're doing that is we have global um, customer support days and literally it's around the world. I'm responsible for overseeing the strategy of the Americas and we do about four events a quarter where we fly our technical support engineers out to various regions in the United States and in the Canada, um, and hopefully Latin America. And we have the customers sit down and, and learn from them, and they'll present to them on what the customers want to hear about. We do performance best practices. We do storage networking, top 10 SRs we see. We basically bring our best and brightest engineers who are our experts who deal with this day in and day out bring them right in front of the customer, fly them into the customers, and you know we get 50, 50 100 people come to these events, and then they sit down, 
talk to the engineers, learn from them, and ideally, in my own mind, it's, it's a great way to hopefully be proactive and help the customers understand things that can hopefully save them time and energy later where they don't maybe architect things in a different way. So hopefully they can have a, a, a lot of value comes out of that where they can learn and then you know, hopefully not run into the issues that, that our tech support engineers find. So innovations at this year's VMworld that I'm excited about. Let's see. Uh, you know, we've, we've seen, they've already unveiled some more evolutionary introductions to the vSphere product suite and the vCloud and then introduced this new vCloud suite which combines a lot of things. I think the space in the application uh, kind of refresh your application development space, you know, in the keynote they talked about refreshing your infrastructure and refreshing your applications, refreshing your access layer. Right in that middle space is really, really interesting. I wish I was a developer, because I'm sure I would be like really excited about stuff like Cloud Foundry and vFabric and, you know, Gemfire and SQL Fire and all the stuff that they're doing right in there, because that's, that's really enabling the next generation of applications that are going to be made to be deployed on these hybrid clouds that, that VMware's talking about building. So I, I really like what they're continuing to innovate in there. Um, I'm not deep enough in there. I'd love to do that. I'm going to be doing some Cloud Foundry sessions this week at this conference, actually. But uh, I think th that's really where we see a lot of exciting stuff happening. You know, if I had to pick one thing that I'm really excited about at VMware, all, after getting to meet Brent Spiner, um, you know, data from Star Trek The Next Generation, um, it would be some of the things I've seen around IT simplicity. And that includes things like a new company called Simplivity, um, who just rolled out, they announced that VMworld, um, basically a single box that includes storage, the, uh, v, uh, the vSphere software, the compute side, RAM, deduplication, uh, and all kinds of things that are necessary to run a data center. So from a simplification perspective, uh, honestly the Simplivity name kind of speaks to that, you can get rid of a lot of hardware and replace it with just a little bit. Now, they're just launched here at VMworld, so that really the proof will be in the details once they start getting real customers out there. But those kind of efforts are really exciting to me because they really make, take the, the guesswork out of IT as a whole.